Uh, we're going to dive right in. And the word that the Lord has for us this morning is it's a good <coughs> word. It's always a good word. <coughs> uh, and I believe it's a word that He wants uh, everyone to take to heart. Because the, the instructions at the end of service is to... to oh, yeah. I probably don't need it, but... Testing, testing, okay. So, uh, I'm just going to dive right in. The title of the message, Men are not from Mars, and women are not from Venus. <laughs> Their origin is the heart of God. That's the origin of men and women. And for those of you who may be too young to know about the book, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus, <clears throat> it's a book about the differences between men and women. But you see, there's a way that seems right to folks that tells them, it tells men, man, I'll never understand women. There ain't no way I'm going to understand women. And it's the same lie that tells women, huh, men, who can understand them? That's a lie. Because in this book, God explains exactly the identity of man, his purpose, and he does the same thing for women. He'll tell a man exactly the identity of the woman and her purpose. See, because our God doesn't do things haphazardly. Amen. He is intentional. Yes. And he has a purpose. Yes. For everything he creates, he has a purpose. And don't go changing it. Amen. Don't go changing his purpose. He does not like that. What's the matter? Okay. So <clears throat> We have we find ourselves, the world finds themselves, men and women in the world find themselves confused Amen. and uh, in the midst of a misunderstanding about who men are and who women are. Now this came through the tree incident. Everybody here knows the tree incident is where Adam and Eve disobeyed the direct command of not eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They disobeyed that. They took of the fruit. They ate it. And then boom, now instead of only good, only God, now they know evil. They know good and evil. And God has given them free will so they can choose to do good. They can follow God or they can follow their own way that seems right. And with that fall came curses. And the curses is what distorts man's view about woman, woman's view about man, even men's view about themselves. Yes. And women's view about themselves. And we're going to delve into that. We're going to look at a lot of Hebrew words. Because when you go to the original language, see this Bible is the Amplified. It's a translation. You go to the original Hebrew and Greek and Aramaic and look at the original word. And then you'll, you'll, you'll find so much information and so much knowledge that makes everything plain. Amen. See, when you look with God's perspective, you won't have any confusion. Because Amen. Amen. He's plain and easy. Amen. 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 So, Let's start at the beginning with Genesis chapter 1, and we're going to start in verse 26. And we're going to go through verse 28. And we'll talk about that. <coughs> Genesis 1, verse 26. And I'm reading out of the Amplified. God said, Let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make mankind in our image after our likeness and let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea the birds of the air the tame beast 
and over all the earth and over everything that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image and likeness of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, using all its vast resources in the service of God and man. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living creature that moves upon the earth. Okay. <clears throat> Notice the word that's translated our image. Our image is the Hebrew word besalmenu. Now, I don't know if I'm saying that right with my southern accent, <coughs> but that's the way, that's, that's how I'm saying it. Besalmenu. It's a masculine noun. Okay? Y'all listen to this. Let us make man in the Salanu. <coughs> masculine. The word translated in our likeness is the Hebrew word <coughs> kidmutinu. Kidmutinu. It's feminine. Right here. It's male and female. <coughs> right here, in those two words, God is telling us he made two genders. Yes. Two genders. Male and female. There is no transgender in God's vocabulary. Amen. Yeah, I said it. Amen. This is the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Transgender is a man-made word that distorts and, it, and sometimes it even nullifies <coughs> the identity and the purpose of men and women. Amen. I mean, you've got little children now who are saying, I, I think I'm a, uh, a, a little boy says, well, I'm a girl. I feel like a girl. I feel like a girl. I, I have thoughts that say I'm a girl. You're a girl trapped in a boy's body. No, that's a demon. Amen. That is a demonic spirit. Come on now, church. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, cast out demons. That's the first thing church is supposed to do. And instead, they hide behind mental illness. They used to call transgenderism mental illness. No, it's a demon. And if a little kid says, I have thoughts and feelings like I'm the opposite sex of what I am, it's a demonic influence in him. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Parents. Don't be pandering to their feelings. Feelings change. Amen. You, you, and you got parents making physical alterations in their children's body based on a kid's feelings. Yeah. How ridiculous. I mean, that's ignorance gone to seed. Be the parent. Amen. Tell your father, tell your child who they are. Amen. That's your job. If your son comes to you and says, I feel like I should be a girl, say, okay. <laughs> Calm down. Okay. So, we have male and female. That's the two genders. Uh, and look at the other thing that, that we see. And God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. And then there's that word dominion. Men. I'm talking to men. I'm talking to the men. Ladies, I will get to you. Okay. Yay. But I'm talking to men right now. I'm talking to you. I'm telling you the truth of who you are. Who you were created by your Father God to be. <coughs> These words subdue and dominion. You're a ruler. You were created to rule. Amen. <coughs> you were created to rule. Men. Men are created to rule.
we're going to get there. I want to camp on subdue and, and dominion. Okay. Remember how God, it, he, he always makes it plain. Yeah. And He makes it plain here in one little word, it. Subdue it. That is a Hebrew word, <coughs> hey, a rest. Subdue hey, a rest. Hey, a rest includes way more than birds, fish, and animals. Listen to what it includes. Land. Earth. The whole earth. Yep. Earth as opposed to heaven. You don't have dominion in heaven. God gave dominion and told you to subdue the earth. Hey, a rest. Subdue hey, a rest. Earth inhabitants. Now, when I first read that, I kind of had a problem with it. Because I'm like, well, you can't rule over people. You can't overrule their will. And you can't. And God doesn't. But what this is talking about is rulers. Principalities and powers. I'm talking about, no, I'm talking about leaders. Uh, government. Amen. Amen. Okay. Because Ooh. government establishes laws. Yeah. That's how they rule over the inhabitants. And they dispense justice and consequences if you break the law. So, mankind is supposed to be in charge of their governments, not principality spirits, right. rulers, and not them. But you have a lot of that that has been uh, stolen in these heathen countries. Okay, look at this. Piece of ground. You have dominion over your piece of ground. You have dominion over it. When storms come, you don't have they don't they they're not allowed. Right, they're not allowed. But you gotta know your dominion. You gotta subdue it. Now look at this. Sheol. Land without return. Wow. The underworld. In the beginning, God gave dominion over death, over, hell, and the grave. Yes. Over Sheol, over the underworld, over evil spirits, rebel angels. Do you see why Jesus could do what he did? Yes. He did it as a man who knew what that little word it meant. Amen. <laughs> he knew. I have dominion over the evil spirits. I have dominion over the devil and his his angels. And they knew he had. And they knew he knew. <laughs> Glory to God. You have dominion over your city, your state, your ground, the surface of the earth. That's how Jesus could walk on the water. <coughs> Amen. He subdued the surface of the earth. He used it for what He needed at that particular time. Amen. That's how we are to live because we're supernatural like Him. When you understand your dominion and to subdue it, and men, I'm talking to you, you've got to realize this is who you are. You are a ruler. And this dominion belongs to you. I love this one. Soil or space or distance of country. That's how Philip was translated. That's how Jesus, when he stepped into the boat after he calmed the storm, it went immediately to the other side. Because he had dominion over space and uh, space of country. Distance of country. Amen? Amen? Land of the living and ends of the earth. I think that covers everything. We need to get a hold of this. We need to get our perspective in agreement and understand what subdue and dominion means. Amen. For how you're to act. Amen? Amen. Okay, <clears throat> I'm still talking to men. 
We're talking about men are not from Mars. They're, they originated from the heart of God. This is who you are. Men are to rule. And let's get specific. I'm telling you the truth. Hear. Have hearing ears and seeing eyes so you can see this truth. Men are to lead their families. Men. See, everything happens in, in the family. He has an order. He goes to the man. Because he created men to rule. Amen. And everything that happens in the family, good, bad, and ugly, That's it. whether it's his decision or the wife's decision, it's on him. Amen. It's on him. Amen. He's the one. Got to explain to God what happened. That's right. That's right. Amen. Okay? Amen. This is who you are, men. You're rulers and you lead your family. Amen. Now, too many times, men abdicate their position of rulership and leadership to their wife. Amen. It happens. And I will tell you the only reason it happens. And, and ladies, I'm talking to me because I was this woman. Yeah. I was this woman. Yeah. Strong will mm -hmm. and stubborn. Mm -hmm. That was me. Am I right? Amen. <laughs> I'm just being real. <coughs> if I had known this truth about who I am and who he is when we married, oh, we'd have had heaven on earth long before now. <laughs> but that's the reason. Now, man, you listen. Because you married a strong will and a stubborn woman. Now, Say you're a strong-willed man and you marry a strong-willed woman oh, yeah. who don't know who they are. Right. Huh. you got hell on earth. That's what I mean, two strong-willed people, that's hell on earth. Who don't know their identities and their purpose. Yeah. The family's all messed up. <laughs> it's way out of order. It, it, it's a, a, a deformed creature. Mm -hmm. Because both trying to have the head. Got you got you got a family with two heads. That's deformed. That's not how God uh, established it. Now, the husband, the man, and and if you read if you read the studies, they say men, most men. There are some men who multitask. But most men, especially my husband, because I can say amen to this, he does one thing. <coughs> Don't give him two things to do at the same time. Because he is a one mailbox man. You know, he's, he's got one thing and he does it well. <laughs> he does it well, but give him two things and he's He's not, not happy. You cannot compute. Yeah. He's not happy. Overload. Yeah. So <laughs> there's there's two things that God ha has for men and who they are. Unconditional love, because God is unconditional love, and you're made in His image. So He requires unconditional love, the agape love, the divine love. He expects and requires men to walk and live in unconditional love. Amen. And then the second thing is integrity. Amen. That they're to do everything in integrity. They do the right thing no matter who's watching. Because they know that God is always watching. Amen. So that's it, men. Unconditional love and integrity. That's all you got to focus on. Now, us, us ladies, we have a lot to focus on. Yeah. We'll get there. I, I haven't forgot you, ladies. And this message is not just for married people. 
Because you single ladies, y'all are married to Jesus. He's your husband. So you need you need to, to learn who you are and how you're to, to respond as his bride. Amen? Okay. <laughs> Everything okay? I've been getting locked in the door. Oh. <laughs> okay. Now, there's one thing about unconditional love. I'm going to get serious here. There's one thing about unconditional love, and it's fearless. Unconditional love is fearless. What does that mean? And that means that the man is never afraid to take the lead and to say no to his wife. You're, you're, not, you're never afraid. Because the unconditional love always places the best interest of the wife and the family ahead of anything. Ahead of anything. Because remember, God goes through the head, the head of the house, the husband, the man. And many times, and I'm speaking from experience, many times the woman sees things as the way that seems right, but the husband has heard from God. And the woman will get in fear. Right? Yeah, the woman will get in fear. But sometimes the woman just wants what the woman wants. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm going to give this example. I'm being transparent this morning about me. Pastor said before that when we moved to Tulsa for him to go to Raymond, he, he told me, we was laying in that hotel bed, and he said, I believe the Lord wants me to go to Raymond. I rolled my eyes. I'm like, no way. That was in my heart. And you did say, well, he didn't tell me nothing. I did tell I, I said, well, he ain't told me nothing. Well, why did I tell him that? Because I didn't respect him. I didn't think the Lord would really talk to him. Oh, yeah. 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 Because that's why well, he ain't told me nothing about it. And in my heart, I ain't doing nothing. I'm not moving to Tulsa. That was not in my life plan. I, I was in the middle of uh, my, building my dream house. I said many times, I'm going to live and die right here. I didn't want to sell my house. I didn't want to be married to a preacher. That wasn't my life, according to Katie. Because, see, I was strong-willed and stubborn. But thank God for His grace. I'm not near like I used to be, huh? Not all of you. That's right. So, we moved. We went to Tulsa. We went to Ramah. And then it comes time he graduates and he felt in his spirit, we need to stay one more year. We need to stay one more year in Tulsa. Oh, no. Me and the kids was ready to come to Louisiana. I want to chunk Oklahoma and get back to Louisiana. And he caved in to me. And we had hell on earth for about a year. More than a year. I mean, you know, we got into a rent house we couldn't afford. He took a job that didn't pay the bills. I mean, it was bad. I, we have testimony after testimony how God in His mercy took care of us through that huge mistake. But see, it, it wasn't my mistake. It's His mistake. In God's eyes, it's all on Him. He should have been fearless and said, Katie, God said we need to stay another year. We're going to stay another year. I'd have pitched a fit. He'd have had hell on earth probably for who knows how long, maybe the whole year we were there, but he'd have done what he was supposed to do. Amen? Amen. 
You see know how? what the outcome would be. In who knows? Who knows? Who knows? God has turned everything around for our good. He does that. That's who He is. Right. But if we will operate our families in the order that He has set forth, you can have heaven on earth. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But see, too many times the, the preachers don't preach this. But it's the truth, and I want this to help y'all. Because I've seen the difference when I submitted myself to Him. And, and we'll get into that, ladies. It's good, ladies, I promise you. But isn't it good to know that us as ladies don't really have... It's all on the man. They better do what they're supposed to do. Oh, Aubrey. Yeah. Aubrey's like, oh. <laughs> That's <laughs> on the man. <laughs> but women have responsibilities too. Yeah. We'll get to that. Okay. So, we see that Adam was created to be a king priest in the earth. That's who man is supposed to be, the king priest. Men, you are sons of God. Christian men men who have entered that covenant with God, they become sons. And you are to um, adapt and adopt His character. You know, like, that's my boy. Yeah. He's just like me. I'm going to be just like my daddy. Like that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Now, who has ever seen God? How do you know what He's like? You look at Jesus. That's right. Jesus is the expressed image of our Father God. Amen. And so all you do is look at the life Jesus lived and live that way. And then, then ah, that's my boy. He's just like me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Now, again, me and your identity is unconditional love. That's your identity. And integrity, that's really your purpose. Both of them. Un unconditional love and integrity. Easy. Just two things. Just focus on unconditional love and you get that by spending time with Jesus. And in the Word. And you see how He reacts to things. Amen? <coughs> Alright. Let's look at Genesis 2.18. Okay. Now God has put Adam in the garden. And He says, Now the Lord God said, It's not good or sufficient or satisfactory that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper meet. Now that word helper meet does not mean an assistant. Too many times down through the centuries the church uh, and really the whole world has relegated women to assistants. Or some, some places they're slaves. Okay? But this is not what this word means in the Hebrew. The Hebrew word is ezer konegdo. And it means so much more than assistant. And we'll get to that. But let's, let's finish reading. I will make him a helper meet. Suitable, adapted, complimentary for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every wild beast and living creature of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called every living creature that was its name. And Adam gave names to all the livestock and to the birds of the air and to every wild beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper meet, one suitable, adapted, and complimentary for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And while he slept, he took one of his ribs, or part of his side, and he closed up the place with flesh. And the rib 
or the part of his side which the Lord God had taken from the man, he built it up and made it into a woman. And he brought her to the man. And then Adam said, This creature is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And it goes on to uh, indicate the first marriage. But let's look. Did you notice that God took what was already in Adam and took it out? He withdrew it and created another creature. See, Adam he formed from the dust. Eve he took from Adam and, and fashioned the woman. Made her. Yeah, he, he took the feminine part out of Adam and created a female mankind. See, Adam means man. Mankind. And when God first created mankind, that female and male were in one body. But all the animals and the birds, none of them were suitable for Adam. So he took the female part, the feminine part out and created a female. A female mankind. Now, do you realize that Eve was something that Adam had lost? God withdrew it. He withdrew. So for, for Adam, it was simply a, a withdrawing and a closing up of the flesh. But with Eve, the word built up, that indicates time and care. See, woman was not just slapped together. No. Remember how much God loves Adam? He took time and he took care. And he's thinking, what is the best thing, the, the most adaptable and complimentary for him? What kind of creature can I form out of the feminine part that I took from him? And he took time and he created a woman. You know, they got preachers that say, Adam went, whoa, man. He liked what he saw. <laughs> Remember, she didn't have no clothes on. <laughs> Come on, men. Y'all know y'all like to look at naked women. I'll never look at that word to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he brought her. And, and that, that little piece of our first history is where God established marriage. He, he walked Eve down the aisle. Yeah. And He gave her to the man. Amen. And they were married. Male and female. One man, one woman. Yeah. That's marriage. Right. God established it. In the, At, in the beginning, that is marriage. One man, one woman. Anything else is an abomination. Same-sex marriage is an abomination. That doesn't mean it's worse than any other sin. It means God cannot, uh, He cannot put up with that. <coughs> because that's not what His purpose of marriage was for. Remember, He's always about purpose. He's intentional. Why did he want male and female? Man and woman. What was the command? Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. People want to come down on the Catholic Church about their uh, birth control doctrine. They're, they're correct. People don't like to hear that nowadays. They want their, their 2.4 kids. No. God's commanded be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Amen. That's what He commanded. I don't find it anywhere that He says, well, you know, I know the economy is kind of tight. Maybe all you can afford is uh, two kids. So 
He don't say that. Can you hear that coming out of his mouth? I'm worried about our finances. <laughs> no. That's where you have to trust God. Amen. Amen. But hey, I'm leaving that between you and God. But I'm just telling you the truth. Amen. You study it out for yourself. If you want a blessed life, you're going to do everything this Bible says. And you'll have a blessed life. If you lean not to your own understanding, but trust God. And me and I'm talking to you. Y'all are the head of your house. Okay. Now, let's talk about the word Ezra Konegdo, those two words. And then we're, we're going to wrap up the men and get, get on with the women. Ezer has originally two meanings in Hebrew. And it means to rescue or save. Women, I'm talking to you. This is you. This is your identity. Ezer. To rescue, to save, and to be strong. Now, in the Old Testament, Ezer is used twice in Genesis talking about the woman. The woman was created, Ezer, to rescue the man, to save the man, and to be strong for the man, for the family. Okay? They're not to rule, they're not to lead. They are to rescue, to save, and to be strong. You're a warrior. Amen. Because most of these, these at the times in the Bible that Ezra is used, it's used in the context of military. Like the nation of Israel who appeals to other nations to help them in a military conflict. Uh, most of the time, I think it's 16 times, it's used of God. God is the Ezra to Israel. Amen in a military helper. He, God comes to help. You see this, women? Yes. You're not an assistant. You're like God, a helper. In, in the context that you, you can bring help that the man needs. Amen. You can bring help that the man doesn't have, but you have. Yeah. Amen? The Ezra. Ezra is a warrior. Man is a ruler. We're talking about in the context of the family. In the context in the earth for single ladies. You're a warrior. Alright, now let's look at Ephesians, ladies. Because we're, we're here with the ladies now. Ephesians 5 and verse 33. This is telling us ladies our weapons. So you're a warrior. Warriors have weapons. These are your weapons. Acts 5.33. Uh, not Acts, I'm going to ask. Ephesians 5.33. Let me get over there. Okay. Uh, the Amplified reads like this. However, let each man of you, without exception, love his wife as being, in a sense, his very own self. And let the wife see that she respects and reverences her husband, that she notices him, regards him, honors him, prefers him, venerates and esteems him, and that she defers to him praises Him, and loves and admires Him exceedingly. Now, a lot of times, if women read this without the perspective of God, without knowing that I'm a warrior and these are my weapons, they'll get all offensive because, well, I ain't going to submit to no man. I've got my own mind. I'll do what I want. Amen. That's not the perspective of God. That's not who women are. 
Let me say it this way. It is not who a woman of God is. You've got women that are unbelievers and they're just in the fallen state. They don't know their identity. Some of them are in lesbian relationships. Totally, totally deceived of who they are. Don't even know who they are. But a woman of God who has the bright perspective will see that I'm a warrior. I'm an Ezra. I'm a warrior and these are my weapons. Come on, ladies. Am I the only one who gets fired up if you mess with my husband? Or my children? Don't do it. Don't do it. Because I will come after you. I will cut you. I got all these weapons. Okay. I want y'all to get this, ladies. Y'all are a warrior. Now, notice how many times respect, okay, respect, reverence. You know what reverence means? Deep respect. So there it is twice. Respect your husbands. Have a deep respect for your husband. That tells me that God is very serious about wives and women respecting men. It's important to him. And isn't it interesting that these psychological studies have shown that the number one thing that men want is respect. Is respect. <laughs> and look at the men that the women disrespect. How miserable they are. Because women, especially the wife, when she respects the husband, it builds him up. It, it, it helps him remember who he is. Amen. So don't be bad mouthing your husband. Respect him. Notice him. All right, ladies, y'all all have seen the male ego. <laughs> men have an ego. And they like it to be stroked. Amen? And you can do that by noticing him. There's lots of times I'll, I'll text him or I'll Marco Polo him and I'll say, I just want to tell you how wonderful you are and I sure appreciate how hard you work for me. I love you. I appreciate you. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to spin it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, get your spin it. That's it. See, that I'm noticing what he does. He works hard for me. He does. And I appreciate him. Yeah. I appreciate the way he works for me. He takes care of me. Amen? Yeah. And he likes to be noticed. Amen. <laughs> Men like to be noticed. Okay, regard him. That means to consider. You consider him. So you, you've got plans where you, the first one you consider is your husband. You know, like uh, when, I, when I do my casa, I'd always consider him. I'm going to be gone. So I, I got his supper all in the pot pot. I got his plate or his bowl right there. I got everything just like I'm there so he don't have to look for it. Because I have a tendency to rearrange stuff and don't tell him about it. Like this morning, I cleaned out my pantry and I moved the sugar. And he, now where did you put the sugar? <laughs> I had to go find it for him. I do that so he keeps me around. <laughs> he can't live without me. <laughs> okay, so the next one is to prefer him. To honor him, uh, to venerate him. That's another way of saying respect. Regard with respect. Esteem him. Another, respect and admiration. You see respect? Ladies, that's the number one thing, just respect him. Respect him. 
defer to him. Now this means to accept another person's opinion, usually because you respect the knowledge or experience of that person. So if there's a decision and he says, well, we need to do this, and you feel the other way, of course discuss it, but if he says, I really feel the Lord is saying this, defer to him. Why? Because he's the one responsible. Even if he makes a bad decision, it's on him. Amen. You trust God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But remember this, men. Don't just dismiss your, your woman's counsel. Right. Because you only got five senses. She's got six. Amen. A woman has a woman intuition. Amen. Amen. She's got six senses. Well, that's not very fair. Because <laughs> she's a warrior. She, she's got the, uh, she's the spy in the enemy's camp. Well, that's like I gave you one. So that's you right. One. <laughs> that's right. She's got that intuition. I'll give you an example. Uh, pastor used to work with a, a fella, and they would ride back and forth to work, I believe. And uh, anyway, uh, him and his wife came to our house to get something. I can't remember. Well, she saw my house. She saw all the stuff I had. She saw my husband. And she was after my husband. Yeah. She worked at a little store. And he used to stop there and get uh, probably school that I didn't know about, huh? Anyway, he, he used to stop there and get stuff in the morning going to work. And uh, well, she called the house one day wanting to talk to him. Well, my woman's intuition went, yeah. What is this about? Mm -hmm. And it was some something that she wasn't nothing but just an excuse to talk to. Mm -hmm. Well, then one, uh, I told him, I said, don't you go by that store. I said, that woman's after you. Mm -hmm. What? No, she's not. He didn't have a clue. <laughs> Men don't have a clue when it comes to women's wiles. No. I said, I'm telling you, you stay away from her. Well, it was a week or so later, he had the uh, her husband had gotten laid off and had asked Bo to uh, bring his check by his house. So his and his tools. So there he is, he drives up. Well the husband ain't home. And here comes the wife out the door. Well, could you, could you come in? I really need to talk to you. And so, duh. Oh, well, yeah. He goes in. <laughs> she starts talking about, uh, I'm having trouble with my man. Talk about her sex life. And oh, he's like, wow. And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> he ran out of there. I did like that one. <laughs> he ran out of here. He life. come in and told me what happened. I said, I told you. <laughs> uh, you, you know, so what my, my moral of the story is, men, don't just dismiss the counsel because your woman has a sixth sense and she's got good counsel when, when you may not see it. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Uh, okay, so these weapons make you strong and able to rescue and save your husband when needed. Okay? Let's look at the Hebrew word konegdo. We're going to wrap up. Konegdo means opposite as to him. Or it could mean corresponding as to him. Uh, so woman is the counterbalance. She's the counterbalance and the reflection of man that stands opposite of him. Now see, sometimes if you know who you are and you're operating in the godly order of the home, oh, that's a huge help. But if the home is out of order, it can it can be opposing. It right. can be it can make strife. Right. That's why you need to know who you are. See, feminine and masculine energy are opposites. But how many know 
the, the, the male may not have, like let's just use the sixth sense. The male doesn't have the sixth sense, the female does. So coming together, they're going to be stronger. Right. So there's a uh, there's an illustration. I don't have to put my microphone down. And I think this y'all see it. <clears throat> it's about hands. So you have a left hand and a right hand. And both hands have skin and muscles and ligaments and nerves. They have fingers, they have thumbs. But they're the exact opposite, aren't they? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, this thumb is pointing to the right, this thumb is pointing to the left. Mm -hmm. But, sometimes you may have a, like I'm a right hand dominant, so my right hand is stronger. Mm -hmm. Some people are left handed, their left hand is stronger. But they can still do the same thing. They're both just as important. Mm -hmm. I mean, you wouldn't want to have just one hand. Right. You couldn't do as much. Right. But with two hands and opposite, and when they're together, they're way stronger. Yeah. So when you look at male and female, they're opposite. But men are not from Mars and women are not from Venus. They're from the heart of God. Amen. And together, they're complete. Amen. Why? Think about it. God took the female part out, the feminine part out of Adam and made two. But when they come together as one flesh, they're one. When they're unified, they're the strongest. But yet they have companionship and they have friendship and they have help. They have support. They're stronger. But only if the husband knows who he is, I'm the leader, Amen. and I love my wife as Jesus loves the church. Amen. And I do everything in integrity. I'm telling you, men, when you treat your wife like that, <coughs> she don't have no problem with you. Amen. Amen. And the wife knows I'm not the leader. That's right. I'm not the ruler. I'm the warrior. When tough times come, and in this world you will have trials and troubles, it's the woman who stands strong. Amen. It's the woman Amen. who rescues and saves. Amen. Because she doesn't lean to her own understanding, but she trusts God. And she trusts her husband <coughs> to do what God says to do. And if he's operating in unconditional love, it's a, it's a no-brainer for her. Amen. It's just, it's just going to flow. Amen. That's the way God intended. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Well, I hope y'all have gotten uh, good out of this. I do want to encourage families to take time this week and uh, live in your hearts. Amen. Take time, couples, to to really talk about, hey, how is our family doing? And and, and readjust Amen. and say, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna submit this family to God and we're gonna operate it His way. Amen. And and just know, men, y'all are rulers. Women, y'all are warriors. Amen. 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 Amen.